thank you my brothers and sisters in Christ for joining us once again in another powerful study in God's holy and divine word here at Understanding the Father's Heart Ministries. As always, beloved, we are truly blessed to uh, have you with us. We thank God for you who have continually joined us throughout uh, this blessed year in studying God's Word. And our prayer is that God has given you the strength, the ability, the wisdom in order to be able to live an overcoming life. Above all, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it's about living an overcoming life that the world can acknowledge that we serve a true God, a God that cannot fail, a God that will lift us above our enemies, above our situations, and allow us to bask in His omnipotent glory. But sometimes in life, beloved, life has a tendency to bring us to our place of humbleness and beloved in Christ there is nothing wrong with being humble before all mighty God amen and so beloved we've been speaking on the way of a spiritual warrior and what it takes in order for us to be able to successfully battle in this life because we all recognize now that we are uh, soldiers in God's army regardless if we like it or not because we have taken on the person of the Lord Jesus Christ the devil does not like it nor does the satanic forces of that follows him so beloved we are in for a fight but beloved we are more than a conqueror through christ jesus who strengthens us we have the ability we have the wisdom we have the strength we have everything on our side to walk in victory beloved it is up to us to acknowledge that, to understand that, and to give glory unto our Lord and our God after every victory in this life. Let's go before our Father in prayer. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, that you once again have allowed us, Father, to be able to share your holy and divine word this day. We truly thank you and praise you, Father God. We ask for your anointing of your Holy Spirit, Father, that it will give the right words at the right time, Father God, with the right purpose, Lord God, in order that your people may walk in the freedom that Jesus purchased for them on Calvary. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus of the living God. Christ. Amen and amen. Beloved, the last thing we spoke about is that if we are going to be a complete spiritual warrior, we need to remember and be thankful for what God has done for us in our past. And there are many instances in our life that we can look back and say, thank you, God, because you have done great and mighty things in my life. I know I can, beloved. I know there are times that when I look back and I just thank Almighty God that I am still alive today, able, being able to preach and teach His holy and divine word because the enemy had it in for me. And beloved, you know the crazy thing is? I was helping him in order to destroy my own life. And many of us have done the very same thing. But God has got us to a place now that we know 
who truly our enemy is. It not, it's not another person. It's not our uh, father-in-law, our sister-in-law, our wives, our brothers, our sisters, our, uh, 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 those amongst us. But beloved, it is a evil satanic force that is working today in this world and he's called Satan the devil Beelzebub Lucifer the serpent beloved he desire to see you fail he desire to see you enwrapped by the things of this world where you no longer have a vision or a purpose for God in this life Brothers and sisters in Christ, this battle, as we said before, is not yours, it is the Lord's. And we have to recognize how to devise the two, or divide the two, to know, amen, glory be to God, which battles you ought to be fighting with the willpower that God has given you and that which you should release unto the Lord and allow the Lord to do that which he can in your life. What we want to focus on today is knowing or not trusting in the arm of the flesh. And it is so easy to go back on our own history, to go back on how we accomplished something before, not realizing we might have accomplished something that seemed to be successful, but beloved, we got to recognize how did we get what we got. Because many times we have gotten what we got through manipulation, through all kinds of demonic, satanic ways. But beloved, when we become a child of the, of the Lord, we have to recognize this. We are no longer to go after things through the flesh. We are no longer to trust the arm of the flesh, but rather we are to trust the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God, beloved, many times will tell us in certain situations, hands off. Don't you dare go in with the same attitude that you had 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. You might have believed that you were successful, but beloved, remember this. Not only is God, get this now, not only is God blessing his people, but Satan has ability to also to bless his people. Get that understanding. Understand that. Because if you don't understand that, you will never be able to determine what is from the Lord and what is from the hand of God. Of the enemy. Adam and Eve couldn't determine what the enemy was trying to do to him because of deception. But beloved in Christ, we as born again believers have the ability to discern between the two. Amen. Glory be uh, to the living God. So beloved, we want to focus on that principle of faith. How to walk in the spirit, how to war in the spirit, and not with the arm of the flesh. The arm of the flesh talks about self-esteem. It talks about educational exploit. It talks about positive thinking and positive thoughts. And all these things have crept into the lexicon of the church. Because even the church now is talking about positive thinking thinking, talking about how you need to build you up, how God wants to just bless you and just continually bless you. That's what the church is talking about many times now. You know, if you give this, then God will bless you that way and God will give it to you this way and everything else, beloved. We are loaded down with antidotes in how to get something from God rather than antidotes on how to be like Christ. Because beloved in Christ, it is all about emulating the Lord Jesus Christ above anything else. 
anything you might get, anything you may gain. Paul considered it as dung. All that he had gained, all the wisdom, all the knowledge, everything, he considered it as dung before Almighty God. Because now he desired that which was in the spirit rather than feeding that which is of the flesh. Beloved in Christ, we've been studying from 1 Samuel and we've been talking about David, if you have been with us. And if you have not, go back on some of the teachings that we have been doing in the last past week uh, on YouTube, our YouTube station, uh, and also on the last past Sundays. Go back and look at spiritual war and start from one. Amen? And we are now on spiritual, uh, 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 the way of a spiritual warrior, five. And the principle we are going to be focusing on today is not trusting the arm of the flesh. In 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, and we have come to the 38th uh, verse. Uh, look what happens here between Saul and David. David had made up his mind that he was going to stand against Goliath. Amen? But look what Saul was trying to uh, get uh, uh, David to trust in him or to trust in his uh, coat, uh, coat of armor. Look what he what the word of God says. And Saul armed him. You know, David didn't ask for this. I want you to remember this. And Saul armed David with his armor. And he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor. And he assayed or tried to walk to go. For he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. Saul was trying to get David to walk the way he wanted to walk. To war the way he wanted to war. And beloved, we already had recognized that Israel was warring in fear. And David had put fear aside, that his focus was completely different. David realized he could not trust Saul's ways. It restricted him. We must also, when people try to assist us and to help us, we have to know, beloved, where it is coming from. Beloved, that's one of the most important lessons that I believe that we can learn as a born-again believer. Know where your source is coming from. Ministries need to know where their source are coming from. But many don't care long as we get what we get and we can use it for so-called the building of the kingdom of God, then it doesn't matter if it is blood money. It doesn't matter if it comes from a, 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 a situation where people are stealing in order to get it, to give it. Doesn't matter if it's coming from a place of uh, of, of, um, what I want to say, the word I want. A place of taking advantage of someone who may not even have a place to even lay their own head. Or their electricity have been cut off. It doesn't matter. Just bring all into the storehouse. It doesn't matter how you get it there. It doesn't matter where it comes from, beloved in Christ. 
we need to be mindful of that. David said, no, Saul, I can't go with these. Actually, this is putting me in bondage. I can't even walk right. It may seem right to the world, but it's not right for me. Because you're trying to get me to trust in your armor. You're trying to get me to trust in the flesh. But I am going against Goliath by the Spirit. Beloved in Christ, there is two kinds of battles. In the 40th verse, he says, And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag which he had even in a scrip and a sling was in his hand and he drew near the Philistine. Beloved, what he did was he took on trusting God completely. I'm going to do what God called me to do. I'm going to do it God way. I don't want no waste or, 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 or any thought that this armor had protected me. I don't want anything of a sword in my hand as though at that moment it would defend me or a shield in order to defend me. I don't want any of that. Because when it is said and done, I might say to myself in the corner of my mind, when I'm all by myself, I might even think that I did it on my own. And I don't even want that opportunity to even think that way. So Saul, put it away. I'm taking five smooth stones, put them in my shepherd bag, and this is what I'm going to stand against a Goliath with. Beloved in Christ, by the Spirit of God, we are to trust Almighty God, not our own ingenuity, not our own wisdom, not on how we did it in the past, but rather trust the Lord God at this moment in what he wants to do in uh, your uh, life. And the Philistine came and drew near unto David. Now it's important to, to look at this, beloved. And the man that bare the shield went before him. Look at this. You, your enemy will not just run away from you. There are things in your life that just will not go away from you in your life. You can sing all, you can say all the hocus pocus you want to. You can pray all kind of prayers that you want to. And it may not leave your life. Because it is about the Spirit of God. It is about when God's Spirit moves or removes it out of your life. And it is us trusting and enduring and believing that God will do it. And beloved, and it is not because of who we are. It is not because of we had some great willpower and we made it through. But look what the enemy did. The Bible said that Goliath ran toward him. Glory be to God. Because he wants to put fear in David. The enemy wants to put fear in you. When a situation in your life just seems to be so overwhelming in your life. Beloved, it is coming with full force. Like a train uh, on a train track. Beloved, it wants to... Uh, give you the idea that is going to destroy you. As the word of God said that Satan is. He is like a roaring lion. But beloved, the, the, the power, the sting 
have been taken away from him. That we have to know by the wisdom of God. But beloved, how many times have you heard this? That not only did Goliath come or come, but Goliath came with a shield barrier. Beloved, when a devil comes at you, when a demon comes at you in your life, or there's something in your life like a stronghold you can't seem to pull away from, and when you seem to pull away from it, somehow when you get away from it, you seem to trip over something else as you go along, because the devil never comes alone. It is a shield barrier now that is tripping you, another demon that is tripping you down on the other end. Because you have to be mindful in your life that even though you're fighting against this enemy, glory be to God, in the spirit realm, that's why the word of God tells us to stand. To stand against the enemy. Not to run away from the enemy. But to stand against the enemy. Because he will come to you as a roaring lion. But you stand in faith. And beloved, believe almighty God. He ultimately will flee. Just as he fleed Jesus in the desert place. When Jesus stood against him. He will also flee from you. But beloved, remember when he flees that there are still other demons that will take his place. And that's why the word says uh, that even this man had a shield bearer. Glory be to the living God. That was shielding Goliath. So Goliath actually wasn't standing alone. But David, glory be to God, stood by himself. With only the trust in his God. Glory be to the living God. Glory be beloved in Christ. Now look how the devil will respond or act. It says, and when the Philistine looked about, looked all around and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy <laughs> and of a fair countenance. Who is you, boy? Who's your daddy? Why is your daddy allowing you to come out here and fight a man's fight? And he said, and the Philistine said unto David, Am I nothing but a dog that you comest to me with staves or with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. He cursed David. The devil, beloved, get this now. You got to understand this. The devil will disrespect you because he is the devil. Goliath disrespected David and cursed him by his gods. But beloved in Christ, that did not make David emotional. It did not make him fearful. It did not make him want to leave the battle and to compromise in life. And beloved, neither should we compromise with something that is in our lives that we know is not the will of God, which we know that God is not pleased with. Beloved, we continue to stand even when we feel as though we have fallen to our knees. Beloved in Christ, we are not, we are down, but we're not. And beloved, I'm saying to you today, you're not out. Whatever you're going through right now, whatever bad report that the doctor has given you, you may be down on your knees, but you're not out. You are not a quitter, but rather you are a believer. You are one that trusts Almighty God by the Spirit of the living God. You are in the best place place you could ever be and that is in a humble state 
even as David was, glory be to the living God, and even though Goliath was disrespecting him, David knew who he trusted in. Then said David, David responding now, beloved, David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, glory be to God, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord God of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. You might think, that you have disrespected me. You might think you have caused me to fail. You might think you have caused me to fall. You may think that I'm not going to be able to put food on my table because you let me go from that job because I stood as I should have stood over something that was righteous. You believe that somehow that I ain't going to make it. You believe that somehow I'm going to come back begging from you that I need my job back. But I want you to know, Buster, in the name of Jesus Christ, I have come in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, and I ain't coming back. And my God is going to supply all my needs through his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Glory be to the living God. Beloved, we don't have to compromise with the world any longer. You do not have to compromise in order that God will bless you. God will bless you, beloved, beyond the imagination of what folk think God can do. You don't have to compromise, beloved. You don't have to compromise anymore in your life. Your day of compromising with the devil is over. You need to take the boldness of what David did. Because David was not going to trust in the arm of the flesh any longer. Let the entire army, including Saul, trust in the flesh. But I am not going to trust in the flesh. Beloved in Christ, that's where you need to be. And that's what you need to trust in. And know that your God will meet all of your needs. Beloved, this is a promise. This is a guarantee from the throne room of Almighty God. Beloved in Christ, as always, our time has come to an end. And we pray that the Lord will continue to sustain you and continue to keep you. And may the Father open your heart to his understanding. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus the Christ.